This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Hey, what's up? In this video, I wanna talk about the difference between ACV and RCV and why you really need to know the difference and what those mean. So basically what ACV and RCV stand for, ACV stands for actual cash value and RCV stands for replacement cost value, right? And basically all that means is, is that um, the, the ACV is gonna be the, whatever the payment is uh, minus depreciation. And so that whatever's left over after the depreciation is taken out is the ACV amount or payment, right? Replacement cost uh, value, RCV, is the total amount of, and of course this is less dedu deductible, We're setting a de deductibles aside, um, the, the deductible is always gonna be taken somewhere, right? RCV is replacement cost value, which means the full, whatever it costs, hey, we've determined that it's gonna be $15,000 to fix this, the contractor agrees, everything, we're all good to go on everything else. If we're gonna pay the full RCV, we're paying the $15,000 less deductible, right? Um, so uh, that's pretty much RC, ACV versus RCV in a nutshell, but I think we're to take it down a level and to kind of drill down just one more level, um, this is where we talked about in the last video, um, repair versus replace, right? So in this situation, <clears throat> this is where we're paying the, the full RCV up front, it may have been that you wrote a $15,000 estimate filled with nothing but repairs, right? There, there wasn't one replacement operation in there at all. It was all um, fixing stuff, uh, pressure washing, um, cleaning, things like that, right? And you can write some big estimates that way, especially on like smoke claims or, or wildfire uh, claims where there's a lot of smoke and soot in a house where there may not be any burn damage, but there's a lots and lots and lots and lots of cleaning and deodorizing and things like that. And those are considered to be repairs or labor items that are generally, depending on the state, are generally not depreciated, right? So you're writing a $19,000 estimate or a $15,000 estimate and taking the deductible off the top of that and then just handing the homeowner a check, right, for the whole thing. Boom, you're done. Anything else comes up, you know, if you find more damage or whatever, or it's just whatever, call me back. Otherwise, this, is, this, this should take care of you, right? Whereas over here, you know, you have a situation where, okay, there's smoke damage and there's we're using HEPA filters and cleaning and wearing spacesuits and you know whole, tenting the house and all this kind of stuff but also a burning tree branch landed on the back slope and did a bunch of damage back there on the back slope and we had to replace we ended up replacing the entire roof right so it's a full replacement of one at least one part of this that estimate Right, well that's gonna be, because like we talked about previously in the repair versus replace thing, since we're replacing the whole thing, then the insurance company wants to split that payment up into two, right? So in other words, they're gonna say, all right, well the value of the roof as it is on the house right now, forgetting about the damage, uh, you know, it's a, a three tab shingle, it's got a 25 year useful lifespan, and we'll say it's got, it's 12 years old, right? So average average uh, lifespan or average uh, condition is, would say it's about 48%, so about 50%, right? So we're gonna give you 50% up front on this in that first check that has all those other repairs in it that you're paying the full price on, and then once the work is complete, then show us that you did it, and then we'll send you the rest of the money so that you can finish, you pay off the contractor for the work that they did to replace the roof, right? That's basically how the ACV versus RCV and the repair versus replace kind of shakes out in the context of like an actual situation, right? Insurance companies do this um, for, I think really the main reason that they do it um, is it's traditional, right? It's the way they've always done it. And um, because a lot of the time the homeowner uh, and certain a lot of, and it's, but mainly with hail and wind and things like that, um, the homeowner doesn't do the work, right? So in other words, they will say, well, you know, the insurance company gave me $12,000 for hail damage to my roof and siding and, and some window screens in the gutters, but eh, I don't care. It's, it seems to be cosmetic and, um, it's not causing any leaks or anything like that. And honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd really rather pay off a bill with that $12,000 uh, 
or you know, it wouldn't be the full twelve thousand dollars. It would be they'd be getting part of that, right? Or with the money that I get from the insurance company, I don't want to do the work because I want to buy a new jet ski. I want to pay off a bill. I want to pay my taxes. I want to you know send my kid to trade school or horse camp or whatever it is, right? So they take the money, they do something else with it, or they, or they save it, or they invest it thinking that they're gonna win somehow um, in that situation, which I don't, whole other video. <laughs> um, so the insurance company, and I think this is, this is fair, they don't think that it's fair for somebody to be paid for a full price of a thing if they still have the old, the depreciated one on there. And depreciation is not a insurance specific thing. It's a real thing that's anything can be depreciated in, in a lot of different circumstances, right? So you've used half the value of the roof already. The insurance company doesn't want to pay for the full value of, the, of a full roof until you've done it, right? Um, and uh, the, so they don't think it's fair to pay for the, the full replacement of something when they, they just they're not going to do it right. They're just they're not going to do the, actually do the work. They're just going to pocket the money, um, and, I, and I agree with that. Um, and the second reason why they do that as well is because because they know that a certain percentage of people uh, or policyholders aren't going to actually do the work, or they're going to find somebody that can do the work for less, or they're going to do only parts of the work, right? Just to get it like maybe they'll do the roof and forget about the siding and the gutters, right? So they're going to get a little bit more of that, but they're not going to get the whole thing. Um, the insurance companies uh, at the highest, really, really to any level, but I think at the highest levels, they compete on price and that like net promoter score metric, right? So how likely are you to uh, recommend Acme Insurance to friends and family, right? That's really the only metric that they, that they care about. And a lot of people are gonna make that decision based on the price, right? Well, it's too expensive, I'm, I went with your competitor, right? So they, they're gonna try to, they're all competing on the price um, at that high level and they can keep premiums down for everybody, right? By uh, not paying full 100% replacement cost on every single claim that, that comes in, right? Um, so those two factors, I think, are the really the main reasons why they will depreciate and why we have, um, why we care, right, as adjusters about repair versus replace and actual cash value versus replacement cost. And the third thing, uh, I believe that they use the actual cash value and the replacement cost sort of ideas are that in, they can use um, actual cash value or taking away, let's put it this way, taking away replacement costs, a benefit, right, in the policy through a separate endorsement that gets applied to their policy if the homeowner's not keeping up their end of the bargain, which in the policy it says, it states very clearly that, that the homeowner is responsible for, the insurance company is responsible for doing this, but the homeowner has to keep their property up and do these things in order to, to maintain the property so that it doesn't fall apart, which will expose the insurance company to them having a loss, right? So they may, they may do underwriting audits, um, where they say underwriters will like take a look at the house and say, well, the roof is 27 years old and it's a 20, a 20 year old, a 20 year three tab shingle, right? It's a thin shingle and it's falling apart. You know, you can, they just drove down the street and just, you know, they pulled up, all right, I want to go take a look at Bob's at such, such address next and drive down the street and look at the roof. And like, oh my gosh, there's no way. And so they'll do an underwriting review of that property and say, that roof is too much risk for us. We don't want to pay because we know that there's, they're gonna have to have the roof replaced very soon, they're saying, sorry, you're not keeping up your end of the bargain in the policy where you have to keep, your, up, keep up your property. The roof is the thing that covers everything else that you own, right, under the, in the house. Um, you're not keeping up your end of the bargain, um, so we're gonna take away uh, your ability to get replacement costs on that until you step up and replace that roof, right? And so you get a letter, right, from the insurance company saying, um, you know, we, we looked at your policy and we noticed that your roof looks like it's fallen off in, in little pieces, right? It's in terrible shape. It's extremely deteriorated, advanced state of deterioration. Um, and we're not gonna insure your roof anymore at all, right? Or we're not gonna insure it to the full value um, until you have it replaced, right? And so they'll use that sort of as, as a tool, as kind of a little bit of a leverage to say, Hey, you've got to keep up your end of the bargain. Um, you know, you're paying a premium and everything, but we're also promising to do these things. And if, if the, the greater we get exposed to risk, um, the less we're going to like it, right? And it's not fair to the insurance company for somebody to just let their property go and start falling apart and just start falling cla falling claims for stuff. As they, you know, a, an old deteriorated roof is going to be a lot more susceptible to even 
small hail or lighter winds um, than a brand new roof or a roof that was that has been reasonably maintained, right? So that's the difference. Um, so the actual cash value has, uh, you know, they do that for a number of reasons, not the least of which is saving everybody money on premiums and by, um, you know, uh, providing a lever for, um, for saving money for everybody on premiums um, because a lot of people don't do the work, right? And then also providing a lever or some leverage against people who are like, they, to incentivize them to maintain their property properly. Um, and then replacement costs obviously um, is when that's, that's not, a, you have a replacement cost policy, which the regular HO3 policy and the HO5 policy and, and even like the DP, the lower level dwelling policies still have replacement costs. It's like the lowest possible level policy is actual cash value only. Some commercial policies are actual cash value only. They're more a la carte where you have to, you buy the policy and then you have to buy a bunch of extra coverages to go on with it. Um, so. This is why you need to know the policy inside and out, right? And when you get deployed on a storm, your IA firm should send you a zip folder or give you a link or some kind of access to every possible resource that you can imagine, every endorsement that might be on that particular carrier's um, policy, right? All the policy forms for that particular state that you're gonna go work in. You're gonna go work in uh, Wisconsin and you're gonna go work in uh, Minneapolis, or sorry, uh, Milwaukee, right? You're gonna get all the policies that apply to those to houses in that area, in that state, right? And any endorsements that might pop up, like the roof's not covered at all, ACV on the roof only, uh, sewer and drain backup stuff, which adds, and these are all endorsements, right? Um, so, and this is where the actual cash value versus replacement cost thing comes in. If you, if you, if you don't do it right, or if you, if you say to a, a policy holder, yeah, and as soon as you're done, you know, just let us know, and we'll send you the replacement cost, and they don't have a replacement cost policy, you're gonna get in trouble, right? So you need to know this stuff. So actual cash value versus replacement cost. Uh, hopefully I, I didn't make that even more uh, confusing than it already is, but the, the, the simple fact of the matter is, is that Replacement cost is paying for the whole thing, less deductible, and actual cash value is splitting, if they have a replacement cost policy, it's splitting that full amount up based on where they, and where they split that up is based on the aging condition. They're paying them that up front, and then once they do the work, then sending them the rest of the money on the assumption that they may or may not do the work. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at AdjusterTVPlus.com.